Do you own this Imperial Pilot miniature? If you purchased the Warhammer 40k 4th edition starter set in 2004, chances are you own him. Unless he has been gobbled by Tyranids. Maybe you painted him years ago, or maybe he has languished in your pile of grey for many years. In either case, in this video, I'm going to show you how I painted mine. Lieutenant Varus is a peculiar miniature. He was bundled with a squad of Space Marines in 2004. But he wasn't a Space Marine, he was an Imperial pilot, famous for crashing the Aquila Lander on McCrag during the Eternid invasion of the planet. He's needed to play the missions that came with the Battle for McCrag set. Indeed, he has stats for those missions. Well, stats of some sort. A regular human with a bolt pistol. I say regular human because, well, there were some rules that would mean that even if he was taken off as a casualty, he could come back. Let me explain. Back in the day, GW released campaign rules which were downloadable, and these rules allowed him to play later missions. Between missions, if you controlled Varus, you had to roll a d6 to see if he would come back or not. On a 4+, plus, he was considered to have recovered and could return for your next mission. If you didn't roll a 4 plus though, he was considered to be dead indeed, he would not recover from his wounds, and another ultramarine would become the bearer of the seed. Nevertheless, in the realm of ordinary Warhammer 40k, Varus doesn't have any specific rules. I suppose he could be used as an objective marker, or an Imperial Guard officer since they for one can have bolt pistols. Or maybe he could be part of an Inquisitor's retinue. So, he has his uses as a proxy, but he wasn't a special character with rules in a particular codex. But something like that isn't going to stop me from painting one. Perhaps you have owned Varus, the Imperial pilot, since the early noughties. Perhaps, like me, you obtained one or two in a job lot from eBay. Or perhaps, you will soon own him since you bought the made-to-order Battle from a Crag miniatures offered by GW over the Christmas period. In any case, it's time to cover up that naked grey, and finally get some paint on this guy. Spoilers, this is the second Varus I have painted, but I intend for this one to be the same, because why wouldn't I want to? So I can make this video, I suppose. Let's start with an unpopular opinion. I'm not going to spray him before I paint him. I know, burn me at the stake or something, but I find the spray isn't always necessary, and this brown Humbrol 251 has a good adherence to plastic anyway. Moreover, I want a brown undercoat to show through in certain places. While the brown was drying, I applied some super glue to the base, spread it about with a toothpick, and then sprinkled on some sand. Usually, I use PVA to stick the sand, but it takes hours to dry, and I'm on a tight schedule. For the first base colour, I'm using Citadel McCrag Blue applied to his pilot's uniform. I will not be using washes during this project, so this will be the darkest blue colour. I have thinned this with a little water before applying it to the model. While the blue is drying, I use a black paint on the boots, the bolt pistol and the jean seed box, and also the bolt pistol holder, which I intend to highlight later. Again, this has been thinned down with water to make it spread around easier. A bit like one oils the skin with olive oil rather than, say, tiling grout. Next, I paint a tan earth brown on the trousers, or oh, pants if you're not British. This goes all over, even into the deepest crevices, and will be the darkest colour you see on the trousers once the miniature is done. I use this recipe with Cadian shock troops as well, with a pleasing result. His sleeves also get this treatment. Now the first blue is dry, I take some Calador Sky and apply this over the top, taking care to leave some of the original blue showing in the deepest recesses. I forgot to mention this before, but I also painted his shoulder pads blue, so these got the Calador Sky treatment as well. 
the next stage is to start adding highlights to the raised areas of the cloth. I use Lothan Blue for this, but you could get the same effect by mixing your previous blue with white paint. I paint this on in lines, running perpendicular to the fold of the garment, which I think adds a look of the texture of cloth. I do this wherever there is a rise in the cloth. I also use this colour to edge highlight the shoulder pads. And I don't know, if you're following this as a tutorial, and you don't have the same colours as me, then I would suggest you just use whatever colours you have and experiment with those. Experimenting with different colours by mixing them is another joy I've found in this hobby. Must be my science background, or just having a lonely childhood or something. For the final blue highlight, I mix in some white with the Lothan blue, and repeat the previous step. Again, with short perpendicular strokes, covering less area than the previous pass. I make sure the edges of the cloth get a sharp highlight as well by using the edge of my brush, and of course the buttons as well. It's time for the next coat on the trousers and sleeves. For this I use dark sand, but again, you could achieve a good result by mixing white with the previous colour you used on this area. Like with the tunic, I apply this to the raised areas, leaving some of the tan earth showing below. Then I make sharper and narrower highlights by mixing dark sand and white and painting this on the areas most likely to catch the most light. In the next phase, I take corn red and paint this on the chest plate and the area on the back as well. And then I apply this to the bracer on his lower arm. It is for the red that I painted the model brown first, because I want this to show through. When this is dry, I use a more saturated red to layer over the first coat. In this case, I chose this vermilion red. A couple of layers of this were used to ensure the finished layer was nice and bright. And this is how our man's looking so far. To highlight the red, I chose this orange red and lined it on the edges. This wasn't the final sharpest highlight, so I made it a thick line around the edges of the armour. The sharp highlight was achieved using barbarian flesh mixed with a little orange, which was carefully lined on the edges of the armour. To make it pop, some pure barbarian flesh was dotted on the pointiest areas. Now to do something about the boots. I mixed some Thunderhawk blue with black and painted this over most of the boot, avoiding the deepest recesses because when I paint black, I actually paint it a bluey grey. Some pure Thunderhawk is the next layer, highlighted finely with a light grey. This was also done on the pistol holster and some of the other pouches. To give the effect of cracked leather, I used the tip of my bush, bush? I used the tip of my brush to paint thin lines at the edges, perpendicular to the edge. If you repeat this at slightly different angles with different shades of grey-blue, I find it makes a smashing-looking black leather. All the other areas that were first black get the same treatment as the boots earlier. However, for the pistol, I try to make the lines sharper since it's not made of leather. What I do add on the pistol and the jean seat box are random grey lines to represent scratches. I felt like doing some of the base next, and throwing caution to the wind, I added a couple of drops of tan earth directly onto the base, and spread it over the sand. This will probably take a few coats. For the Aquila, no, not the one he crashed, I took Vermin Brown, which is an older paint still in my collection, and Avalanche Sunset. The Vermin went on liberally first. We'll come back to the Avalanche Sunset when it's dry. For the skin, I like to use Screamer Pink first, since this will be the deepest shade and adds contrast to the final colour. So this went all over the heads and hands. Heads? Just the one head. When it's dry, I take Barbarian Flesh and mix in some Screamer Pink. This is the next layer, which was followed up by some Barbarian Flesh mixed with white on the most prominent raised areas. Actually, 
I didn't achieve the same contrast I usually aim for in this stage, but I didn't really want to repaint it, so I left it as is. The attentive amongst you will notice the Aquila magically grew a coat of Avalanche Sunset, which I used to pick out each line in the wings. Sadly, I forgot to film this, but never mind. I took some purple next for these capsules. Some people say it's gene seed. I don't really care what it is to be honest, I just wanted it to be purple. On the back of his neck, Varus has some wires, probably to feed the headphones directly into his brain so he can listen to Landrader on repeat. Anyway, I painted these dark sand first, to better receive the next colour. But before I tackle that, I go back and highlight the gene seed capsules with some purple mixed with a little bit of white, and that goes on the back and front. Then back to the headphone wires. I painted these yellow first, and then the middle one green. I chose these colours to remind me of the colours used in the earth wires on UK electrical plugs. I then got some white on my brush to edge highlight the gene seed box and the tunic buttons and some other sundry parts. I noticed Varus had two studs on his head. I'm not sure if this means he has 200 years of service, but they got painted black first and then highlighted grey afterwards. Then the base was highlighted with some dark sand, and the rim painted black, and that, as they say, is that. Another finished Varus to add to the collection. He'll make a good friend for the existing one. But have you ever painted one up? Let me know in the comments. And if so, I'd love to know how you painted it. Anyway, I hoped you enjoyed this rather niche video, and if you like what I do, please have a look at my Instagram. And with that, I'd better go paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching.